Hello guys, thanks for all the likes, the subs, the comments. You guys have been fantastic. And I wanted to continue showing you a little bit more about these modular roads. I have another video called Modular Bendy Roads. And in that one, I showed you how to make this section of Modular Bendy Road. I also showed you how to make a straight piece like this. And what I want to do in this video is I want to continue what I started by showing you how to make a T section as well as our crossing section. So we're going to be using the same exact techniques that we used with the bendy road to produce those. There's going to be a couple of extra steps in there. And I just kind of wanted to walk you through this one step at a time so that you knew exactly how to do this. So we're going to use the bend as our template to build from. So let's go ahead and shift D to make a duplicate copy of that and then right click to put it back down. Let's hide the original and we'll go ahead and start editing that copy. So in edit mode, Let's take a look at this in top orthographic view with everything selected. Let's go ahead and duplicate this so we have a copy of it. And I just want to demonstrate first that this isn't going to work well unless you turn on your pivot to use the cursor. Right now it's not set up that way. So if I scale this on the X, notice as it scales, it's not scaling around the middle of the world space. It's not scaling around that red and white 3D cursor. Matter of fact, it's scaling in the middle of the geometry somehow, which is a little bizarre because the middle is somewhere over here. We want it to actually scale around this cursor. So to do that, we're going to change the pivot point so that the transforms pivot point is the 3D cursor. Now when I scale this on the X axis like I was just doing before, it's actually using that pivot point to scale like that. And how much do we want to scale? Well, negative one. That will put it in exactly the opposite orientation. Now on my screen, you can see this as transparent. If you don't see this transparent, it's because you don't have your back face culling turned on. Now I am a regular teacher. I teach on Udemy. And one of the first things I teach in all of my courses is to turn back face culling on. So let's just go over that real quick. This little drop down over here, we have an option for back face culling. If that's turned off, everything will look normal. And you can continue modeling and feel like you're doing a fantastic job. And then later on, when you import this into your game, things are going to look, well, like this. So this gives you an example of what you'll see when you bring this into your game engine. And what's going on here is our normals are flipped inside out. So in other words, the texture side of that one-sided face is pointing in the opposite direction. We want to flip that. This is called flipping normals. And the way you do that is we'll keep that selected and then we'll just hit shift in and that recalculates the normals. So that solves the problem. That way I can keep my back face culling on. This will send me a red flag whenever that happens and we can always fix it by hitting shift in. A couple of things I want to point out. First of all, these are lined up perfectly vertex to vertex. And this is centered right down the middle using this as an axis right here. Very important. Let's go ahead and switch to face selection. And I want to select these faces right here and delete them. We can do the same thing on this side. Just delete those faces. Now we can see things a little bit better. I think it'd be okay to delete this face as well. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of those for now. We don't want to delete anything over here because we want to maintain these edges and exactly those positions. So we'll keep all of that stuff there. But we are going to get rid of all of this geometry in here. And I don't want to select it like that because it won't select everything. So let's go back to top view again. And I just want to talk about how you do a face loop selection. A face loop looks like this. I can select, for example, this whole loop of faces by just left clicking with Alt on that edge, which is in between those two faces. When I do that, it'll select this whole loop like that. But I don't necessarily want to select that whole loop. I want to select this loop, which goes all the way around like this. So I can do this from top view. So Alt, left click on that edge, safely selects that whole loop, just like that. And then I can do the same thing, Alt, Shift. Remember what Shift does is it adds to the selection. So I'm still doing an Alt, left click, but I'm using Shift, which will add that to the selection. So now we're getting a second loop added to that. We'll do the same thing down here, Alt Shift, and then these three as well. So I want to get rid of all this geometry. Just make sure it selects all the way around like that. 
Now, if you don't like this and you feel uncomfortable doing this, you can select that geometry any way you like, as long as you select that geometry and delete it. Go ahead and hit X, delete faces. Now, we've done this already. Use your edge selection here and Alt left click and then Alt Shift left click to add to the selection. So both of those are selected. Control E and bridge edge loops. Let's go back to top view. Using edge selection again, Alt left click, Alt Shift left click to add more. And this time we're gonna dissolve those, which is gonna get rid of these edges, making this go perfectly straight across the top. Now this is optional. If you don't mind the shape of this, Think about this, this is a road. We've got one lane coming in like this and turning. We've got another lane like this. If you like that curvature, you're welcome to keep it, but if you wanna get rid of it and make it perfectly straight, here's how you could do that. Again, select both of those loops and then hit X, dissolve edges. So now that's perfectly straight along the top. The only thing left to do really is to just fill in this floor here. One thing I'm gonna to do to make this a little bit easier on myself is I'm only gonna fill in half of this so this piece over here, which by the way, I can click over here, shift click, and then control click to select the shortest path right there. It just saves me a couple of extra clicks. I'm not gonna select this side yet. I'm gonna do that after, and then do our fill over here. And then we'll go back, select this edge, shift click, control click, and then fill over here. Now you have this line going across the middle here, which we can just select and dissolve. We don't need that. Now we have a nice T-section. Now it would be really nice if we could make a perfect loop cut right down the middle, but unfortunately we've got this big end gone right here and that's not gonna be possible with the configuration that we have. So let's use vertex selection for this. I'm gonna select that vertex, the one on the bottom, and then this one over here, shift click so that only those two vertices are selected and then hit J to join those two together. And when I did that, I created a nice quad right here. And you can see that if I go to face selection, this is now a quad. It has, you know, four sides, one face, four vertices. So now I can actually control R and make a perfect little loop cut right down the middle. Now we need that loop cut for one reason, really. Ultimately, what I want to do is I want to make a cross section. Now, I haven't even saved this yet, so technically I should save the T section and then work on a crossing section next. So in object mode, duplicate that. This is gonna be my T section. I'm just gonna call it T for now. This one here is gonna be my crossing section, which I'm just gonna call X. And like I said, hide the original and then go in here and with edge selection, select that edge, use V to rip that apart right click. I'm going to left click over here to select this half and then link select with L. Delete that upper half over there. And then we're going to flip this around to the other side using the cursor as our pivot point. Okay, so select all, shift D. And I can either rotate this 180 degrees. That's one way to get it there. Or I can scale this on the Y axis this time by negative one and then Shift in, recalculate normals. Once we do this, we have our crossing section, but we have a little bit of cleanup we can do afterwards. Let's go ahead and select all. Let's put this on vertex selection. That allows me to right click and merge vertices by distance. And you gotta be in vertex selection to see that on the menu. It removed two verts. Now we can go to edge selection. That's the number two, or you can just push this button over here. Select that middle edge. If you want, you can even select these and dissolve them. Dissolving them will remove them, which is fine. Now we're left with a big ingon in the middle, but that's fine. Unless you don't like ingons, you could work this out. But hey, there's nothing wrong with ingons in game design. Believe it or not, I hear a lot of people put ingons down, but they're really not bad people. Okay? So we have an X crossing. We have a T crossing. We also have our straight piece and we have our bend piece. And if we go and piece all this stuff together by hitting G and holding it on control and snapping these pieces together, you can see that we have all the pieces that we need to make some pretty cool modular roads.
So I hope this video helps some of you guys out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell notification icon, all that kind of stuff. And also, don't forget to read the description of this video. In there, I put a bunch of links to some of the stuff that I'm working on. That stuff is important to me. If you guys are interested in anything that I'm doing, that's how you can find out about it. And also, if you really want to support what I'm doing, you can do so by supporting me on Patreon, which is another link you can find in the description. Again, I hope this helps you out. And until next time, good luck, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.